So, welcome to the most eastern point of the Iberian Peninsula. We're uh, sitting at the Mediterranean coast. And uh, over the next few days we're gonna cross the Pyrenees towards the Atlantic. So, uh, yeah, that's where we are, that's what we're doing. Join along. So we've been driving through all these fields with these olive trees and it looks like, even though it's August, uh, they haven't been harvested yet. So if we can have a look. Yeah, so not harvested yet. I'm curious to, to learn when they do harvest it because you would expect, uh, I don't know, same as grapes maybe. So pretty cool place. So the road has suddenly disappeared into nothing, which is uh, what happens more often on these routes. But uh, yeah, pretty interesting stuff. Right, so let me explain what we're doing. We're following the AC, the Adventure Country Tracks, and we're gonna follow the part that goes over the Pyrenees from coast to coast. Normally ACT says it's gonna take five days, probably it's gonna take me a little bit longer, because uh, I like to do everything slow. Um, but yeah, we're currently at uh, 1250 meters, so uh, setting up camp and uh, enjoying the evening. So back on the mountain, it's definitely colder, so I had to pull out the fancy sweater again. Uh, so what I didn't say is that the ACT is, uh, is a track designed for motorbikes normally and uh, they've got tracks in a few places in Europe. Uh, so I'm not 100% sure whether the, the Land Rover will fit. Uh, I came across a few guys who were doing the, the TET, the Trans-European Trail, which is a similar trail for motorbikes, uh, who crossed the Pyrenees doing that. And they said they had real issues with the rock slides and all that stuff. So uh, I don't know, we'll see what, what comes up. Uh, probably going to be pretty interesting. So we are at the foothills of Andorra, going up a peak negre, so that's up today. I just noticed in time that the ACT actually doesn't take you up uh, a peak negre, so uh, kind of surprised by that. So what also surprised me is that this morning's clip when I was trying to do maintenance had no audio, so uh, let me explain what's happening. So I regularly do a check of the Land Rover, uh, mainly if the wheels are still tight, so that's what you see me doing here. So I got the torque wrench out and I went packing up, always make sure to put it back at zero to keep it dialed in. And then, uh, yeah, head out of camp. Let's go. So there's a bunch of logs on the side of the road. I think uh, a lot of these trees actually fell down over the road. Uh, I saw some, uh, some trees that were cut down clearly over the road. So, uh, yeah. It's a funny thing about a place like this. They feel wild, but uh, they require quite a bit of maintenance to, uh, to keep open. I think I just saw a Spanish dude with a trailer coming in uh, to get some free firewood. But uh, yeah, big logging trail now. So in the distance, uh, we can see a little Fiat Panda Cross, uh, which is hilarious because uh, no matter where you go, there's always going to be a Fiat who got there first. 
I saw them a lot in the, uh, in the West Alps, in the French Alps as well. Uh, yeah, apparently just great vehicles to, to drive around here. But uh, yeah, because I've got bigger tires and I can let them down quite far, usually I end up going a little bit faster than they do. So let's see if we catch up. Yeah, so and I kind of forgot, uh, Andorra is not actually part of the EU, uh, which means we've got to do a border crossing, but this is currently what the road looks like. Yeah, so you can see the border, border crossing in the far distance. It's going to be right around there somewhere. Uh, so I'll probably turn off the camera. So even though that, uh, that little hut with the gate is on the border, it's not actually a border crossing. Well, it is, but it is not. It's actually a toll booth, so it costs 25 euros to go up to Pic Negra. Windy. So welcome on top of Peak Negre. It's starting to rain a little bit. Pretty nippy, but a uh, beautiful, beautiful place. Look at that. So a bit further to go. To uh, apparently there's an old Volkswagen camper somewhere out here. So uh, we're gonna have a look for that. But yeah, made it up. So we made it to the old Volkswagen bus uh, There were some Spanish people here with a nice uh, Toyota Land Cruiser 80 series 1 HDT uh, Yeah, the track is, is pretty doable but definitely requires low range, four wheel drive, all that kind of stuff But yeah, about this little bus So apparently in the 70s uh, some guys in a Volkswagen bus thought Oh yeah, we can probably drive through the highest mountain in Andorra uh, And yeah, they did uh, They got all the way up, or at least a large way up uh, and then apparently the engine broke. This is all hearsay from, from the Spanish people in the Toyota. Uh, so yeah, so th this van has been here ever since. Uh, and apparently it was in pretty good shape until, uh, until about three years ago uh, when somebody crashed it for, for unknown reasons. It's beyond me, but, uh, but yeah, it's, uh, it's a pretty cool thing to find all the way up the mountain. So it definitely looks like somebody used this as target practice. Uh, these look like exit holes and on the other side are entry holes. And then uh, it's had its, uh, its abuse over the years. But uh, so far still less of a rusty than a Land Rover I imagine. close for comfort. So sorry, uh, I got kind of distracted with the horses running around, all kinds of people driving up, met a lot of friendly folk today. Uh, I'm actually still up all the way near the Volkswagen camping, so uh, about to make dinner. This is uh, something marinated, so I'll probably see you in the morning. Cheers! So that makes for uh, for episode one of the Pyrenees adventure. Yeah, so check in uh, next week if you want to see part two. Uh, you can like, subscribe, it really helps me out. But uh, only if you want to, you don't have to. And uh, yeah, cheers! I'm having fun. See you next time.